Hello, my name's Fran Sands. Welcome to my boxing coach. Something I always say to my uh, uh, new boxers or novice boxers to get them into understanding how important the lead hand is in boxing. So lead hand, because it's out in front, backhand. Even though I'm right-handed, even though my right hand is my, I guess you'd call it my strongest arm, if I were to have a fight and I could only use one hand, it, I would always use my left, my technically weaker hand. We're going to get into that and we're going to get into some ways of fighting one-handed, how to be really good whilst you, you're just using one hand. Before we get started, why not join the thousands of others and go and download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Uh, 64 pages, packed full of information from the five building blocks of punch power, seven steps to great speed, uh, how to build out your heavy bag session, how to build your training session and how to get the right mindset. Um, something you will come back to for years to come. There's a link down below or there will be a link at the end of the video. Click that link, enter your email address and get your copy. Uh, okay, so fighting one-handed. Um, yeah, it's a point I always make. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to have an arm wrestle with you, then I'm going to use my strongest arm. But technically, when it comes to boxing, my most effective arm is my lead hand. Um, and this is about attack and defense, and it's not just about surviving. It's not, oh, what if you break your right hand, you know? Um, well, let's do some work where we just le use our lead hand. It's not about whether you damage your other hand. If you do, then this is ideal. You know, you, you, get, it, you get it right. Um, so, attack and defense. Well, obviously, the first thing when it comes to your lead hand work, we're all going to say, well, the jab. The jab is king. You know, any coach, most coaches will tell you that's the most important punch that you learn. And there are seven, I like to think of seven sort of variations of your jab. I'll quickly go through them, but I will provide you with a link in a minute. Um, so just get, if you're interested in the map, by the way, the Drill Gorilla, there's a link down below um, where you can, uh, you can go find out more. Really effective, I find, especially people like this when they're at home. So they're not having to put taped lines down on the on the living room floor. Um, anyhow, so um, the jab, you know, speed variation. So I'll throw a slow jab and then a fast jab. So you got one, two, one, two. You know that first jab gets the reaction, mix up that that speed, confuse the defences. You can vary the angle of the jab. So there's your clean straight jab. You can. That's actually long range uppercut, or you can flip it round, and you know that's a long range hook. So you've got jab, two, three, three basic ways one, two, three, one, two, three, three basic ways of mixing up the angle. You can widen the stance. So if I'm on my stance there, um, I want to throw my jab, and I can. Put that foot forward so it's one and back. One, one. Okay, so you're stepping into range, slamming home that jab, and then going back. Now, obviously, if you're wanting to advance inch by inch, you can go one, two. So you throw the jab, one, two. Step in, near foot falls. So you can inch forward, so widen the stance. The hip jab, so having your lead hand down here. Something to really think about on this one is your body weight distribution. If your body weight, so that lead hand being from there really is about triggering the opponent, getting the opponent to do something. If your body weight's slightly on your front leg, then you are more likely to trigger the opponent. Obviously, you're slightly closer. So be prepared to be, you know, just popping back. But you've got to fire the jab from there. So even that one, one. Alternatively, you can have your body weight slightly backwards, and it's a bit more of a defensive posture. So you 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 know you you are less likely to get clipped. But again, it's throwing that jab from there, from here. Yeah. So it's all triggering the opponent and using that jab. Um, 
number five then is the jab block so you're jabbing and you're thinking about defense as well so you throw the jab and that hand goes up at the same time one and this is those occasions where you exchange jabs one 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 you can be even more defensively smart by going one one okay so rather than the jab stopping the shot there you can tilt the head off the center line this obviously means you get significantly more protection from this elbow for incoming um, uh, hooks, uh, incoming right hands, um, and you take your head off the centre line as well. So it's just a bit more of a defensive posture than there. Uh, yeah, jab block. Uh, the tap, 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 tap. About triggering the opponent. Go and watch Roberto Duran. Use that. Tap, tap, tap getting opponents to do stuff and you know you trigger them but then it's, it's really important about the ferocity of the attack after that jab, 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 bang you know really you've got to be ferocious if you're fighting with two hands tap 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 bang, 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 bang. you know speed and ferocity and then number seven uh delayed the delayed arrival so that's about kind of half throwing a jab waiting a split second and then letting it go Again, it's about confusing the defenses, so you can jab, jab, and then, so it's thing, two. Very subtle. Bring the shoulder, drop the shoulder slightly, one, two. Faint, fire, delayed arrival. You want more detail on that stuff? There's a link up here somewhere. So seven ways to mix your jab up. But what other stuff can we do? Defensively, well, of course, we can do jab and movement. So, from there, you can jab and push away. So, you can control the range of the opponent. Jab and push away. Jab, push away. And, of course, you can sidestep. So, when you throw a jab, push off the front leg, hips rotate, shot goes out. What we don't do is lean forward just let the shot go don't you go after it all you're doing is adding weight to the opponent's punches so again jab across there we want to go that way push off that leg jab goes so you're just changing position another great defensive move is the jab opponent comes on to you jab pivot and hook. So you go jab, 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 bang. Again, that's about the opponent rushing forward. As they come on, you time it, you pivot with the hook, and the pivot and the hook work together really well. Just be careful not to overbalance forward. Don't do that. It's really about slipping, uh, pivoting towards your lead hand side, pushing off that leg, and just clipping that hook round. Smacking them around the back of the ear as they go past you. Um, you. You know, you can do multiple jabs on the attack. So if I start there, one, two, three. Try again. So slow it down. One, two, three. One of the best triple jabs. Multiple jabs, that is. Marco Antonio Barrera against Nazim Hamid. And I think, kind of, when those three jabs landed, I just had a little voice in my head going, you know. It was at that point that Nazim Hamid knew he was in trouble. Because it was just about Barrera just moving around. So, boom, boom, boom. Three jabs. Hard, heavy jabs. So work that. Work how to throw jabs at movements. Simple stuff. The basics. The basics done well. They will never, never let you down. Now, just because we, we're not using, we're only using one hand, doesn't mean you can't faint with that hand. So how's about faint the backhand so you're in front of your opponent, faint, bang. So what you're actually doing there with the faint, you are building up, so you're doing a sort of right hand or backhand without throwing the punch. You're driving off the back leg, getting some rotation into the hip, building up a bit of torque in this leg to throw a hard straight jab. So it's... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So what you're doing is turning that jab into a much more powerful point punch. So that's an offensive action. Uh, another offensive action is, is what I call fix and close. So you can, um, excuse me. So you can uh, throw a feint or throw the jab. So it's jab, push in and slip. Oh. So it's jab, push in and slip. Oh. Very Mike Tyson. There's risk, but you're in a fight, you know, every second is risk. You could be moving into a right hand, but you've got to be speed and ferocity again. When you fix them with that jab, slip in, bang, with that, that hook, nice and quick. Um, so you could even, the final thing from a, an offensive point of view, you could be in an orthodox position, Fade the backhand, take the lead leg forward and turn into a south pull, and then throw the backhand as a straight shot. So you're at long range, you know, the, the, you, you're minimizing risk. Faint, cross, bang. Faint, cross, bang. Yeah? So you're turning the jab into a backhand. There's a bunch of ways of fighting one-handed. Do a round, do a whole round where you can mix up those seven ways of doing the jab. Mix up some of those defensive and offensive sequences. Yeah, challenge the brain. Don't forget, download your book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Otherwise, my name's Franz Sands. I'll see you in the next video.